Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, all of our staff, all of the people who are helping to make this worship experience happen for us today, we welcome you. It is our honor to be able to lead you in worship today, and we are so glad that you are here. It is the second Sunday of Advent. It is communion for all people. Our theme is the power of love. This should be a wonderful worship experience. And if it is your first time to worship with us with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, I sure hope that you'll take this moment to fill out our contact form. It is pinned right in the comment section of uh, the Facebook feed. And if this is your millionth time to join with us, please fill out that contact form as well. This is so that we can connect with you, that we can um, help you connect in with opportunities for worship and service and growth and faith and small groups and prayer and all of those things. There's also a place on that contact form for you to fill out your prayer requests that go right to our prayer team and to our pastors. So please use that contact form today. As a part of our worship today, we will be lighting Advent candles with Advent wreaths, as well as having Holy Communion. So if you have an Advent wreath and candles, bring those in so that you can be a part of that. If you don't have one of those, then maybe find a candle that you can light along with us during that part of the worship. And then during Holy Communion, I invite you to bring along your own bread, your own baked good, your own juice, your own beverage, so that you can celebrate that wonderful holy meal of Jesus Christ with us, where everyone is welcome. When we worship online, we do covenant to participate fully to be a blessing. And that means that whatever it is that we're doing, we just encourage you to participate in it. If we're singing, sing. If we're lighting candles, light candles. Um, if it's time to pray, go ahead and pray and fully participate in what is going on. Maybe turn off other devices and distractions and really focus in. And then we covenant to be a blessing with one another. That the way that we are together on the comment section, that that is a blessing. The way we are with the folks in our household, uh, wherever it is that we are, that all that we do is a blessing to everyone participating and everyone in the community. Now, of course, when we get together, we share the love and peace of Jesus Christ. And you can do that by saying, peace be with you and responding and also with you. You can do that with me right here online with the people that you might be gathered with. And of course, with the people in the comment section. And we're going to be led in this by our young adult Sunday school class. Peace be with you. Good morning. This is the Young Adult Sunday School class. My name is Gay Seibert. This is my husband, Rich. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And, and also with you. you. I'm Molly Barrett. And I'm Rex. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. I'm Allie. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Trisha Kumach. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Erin Emery. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Justine Dion. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Rita Brinkley. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Michelle Engel. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Joe Johnson. And this is my wife, Rebecca. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Cindy Hammer. And peace be with all of you. Please join with us now in singing the round, Prepare the Way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all the people will see, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Hi, I'm Dennis Fry. This is my wife, Jennifer, and our daughter, Elizabeth. We are members of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We invite you to have your Advent wreath candles ready and join us in lighting the first and second candles. 
Today is the second Sunday of Advent. During the season of Advent, we get ready. We get ready for the celebration of Jesus' birth at Christmas. And we get ready for Jesus to come again in our world and make all new things. Our lists are long, even in the strange times we live in right now. We want to do it right, be safe, and be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong. To heal what is broken. To mend relationships. To show the love that is a sign of God with us right now. The prophet Isaiah reminds us of this work of love. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God's love is allowed to enter, the healing is made real. But we need to make a way. We need to open the door into our lives and share the love with others. We light these two candles as a sign of hope and a sign of love. Please light your candles too. Let's let these lights be a guide to help us see Jesus, our hope for the world, and the way of love. Please pray with me. O oh God of love, we know we put barriers in the way of your love. Help us clear the way. Come to us again. Set our hearts on fire with your love and rekindle our hope. Be born among us that all the world may be made new. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Marcia Stout. I'm the keyboard player for the Douglas Avenue Praise Band. Please stand and join me in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Kids, it is time to get in close because it's time for small talk. So come in close where you can see everything that's going on on your screen, on your device. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now so you don't miss anything with small talk. Okay, good morning everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud. And good morning. We are here still talking about waiting. We are waiting on the birth of Jesus. And last week, we talked about poor Laud, right? Having to wait to ice sugar cookies. He did get, we did get them iced, so that made him really happy. But we're still in the season of Advent and we're still waiting. And I started thinking about Mary and Joseph and waiting, waiting on the birth of their baby.
and what was to come for them. And I was thinking in this, this season, we always talk about our nativity scenes and the stable, but in the season of waiting, Laud, the stable would have still looked like this. Jesus wasn't there yet. Mary and Joseph weren't there yet. They were waiting to find a place to stay. They had to go and search in to in to in, which is kind of like a motel, for a place to stay. Right, Lod? Yeah. So right now in the season of Jesus, this would have been empty. They weren't here yet. So we have our, our stable and our animals, but remember, helps us remember that we're waiting. We're waiting for all of these to show up. Okay? Now, that's what our kids' Christmas program is about this year that we're getting ready to record today. It's about waiting and about trying to find that room at the inn. So as we continue this talk about waiting, it's really important right now because we're waiting on a lot of things. We're waiting on going back to school. We're waiting on a vaccine. The dog is waiting for the cat to come out of the office. Mm -hmm. It's a season of waiting and these things are going to happen, but we have to wait and we have to be patient. Just like Mary and Joseph had to wait and had to be patient. So thank you. We miss you. We love you. And I hope you tune in next week for our kids Christmas program. Sorry, I've had a cough today. Bye. Love you guys. Miss you. Hello, my name is Gene Brim, a longtime member of Douglas Church since the early 1960s. Our first reading from the Bible is the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 6 and 10 through 11. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our readings. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says the God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God, and every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall come up, become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. See the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and he will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Hi, I'm Steve Dunker. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and a member of the Finance Committee and the Welcome and Inclusion Team. Our second reading from the Bible is Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. 
Please join with us now in singing the round, Prepare the Way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, 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 and all the people will see of our God. Today is the second Sunday of Advent when we are introduced to the person of John the Baptist. John, as we learned last week from Pastor Margaret Ann, is the foretold son of Elizabeth and Zechariah and the cousin of Jesus. In today's scripture reading that Steve shared with us from the Gospel of Mark, we hear the core of John the Baptist's message, prepare the way of the Lord. John says, prepare. Prepare for things to be different. Prepare for God to do something amazing. Prepare for the world to change. Prepare for the valleys to be lifted up. Prepare for the mountains and obstacles to be made low. Prepare for the way to be made straight. Prepare for everything to be turned upside down. Prepare for the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. But what is this new thing that God is coming to do here with us and among us? What is this new power that God is working in the world? What is it that we are awaiting here at Advent, as we prepare for Christmas. On first pass, John's proclamation of the new power of God dwelling in the world might make us think of earthly powers and the images of those earthly powers, of kings and rulers, the rich and the strong, the influential and the persuasive. But this is not how Jesus comes into the world. Jesus comes with a different kind of power that is revealed all over the Christmas story, from Zechariah and Elizabeth to the coming of the Magi. It is the power of families, the power of memory, the power of hospitality, the power revealed to the outcasts, foreigners, and the estranged on the margins of society. It's a power rooted in the love of parents and children and shepherds and innkeepers and proclaimed by the angels. A power not of dominion or empire or charisma or intimidation. Instead, Jesus comes with the power of love. We often tell the story of Christmas in a way that emphasizes the contradiction of God, our all-powerful, all-knowing creator of the universe coming into the world in the apparent powerlessness of a baby, vulnerable and needing care. And this is an important and powerful image, but it's not the whole story. Another facet of this story is how Jesus is wrapped in the power of love even from the moment of his birth. One of my favorite pieces of Christmas music is Benjamin Britten's Ceremony of Carols, a cantata setting of 11 Middle English poems. My very favorite in this set is Britton's arrangement of Robert Southwell's hymn from the 1500s, which speaks of Jesus's infant power. This little babe so few days old is come to rifle Satan's fold. All hell doth at his presence quake, though he himself for cold do shake. For in this weak, unarmed wise, the gates of hell he will surprise. Love has a different kind of power. Love is the power of relationship, the power of honesty, 
the power of authenticity, the power that is deeply rooted between people, the power that transcends and connects and hopes and believes and perseveres and resists and overcomes in the fullness of time. This is so different than the way many of us think of power. Our world often conditions ideas of power as those that can dominate others. That power is the force used to compel others to comply by force of violence or deceit or manipulation. Jesus rejects this idea of power. The stories leading up to his birth and his birth itself foreshadows his teachings on power. As an adult, Jesus will remind his followers that they have heard that they should return violence with violence and an eye for an eye. But Jesus says instead they should meet violence with the power of love. When confronted by those who are doing wrong, Jesus won't demand retribution and punishment, but will instead proclaim new pathways of restoration. Jesus gives the acceptance of love even for those who have earned the punishment and penalties of their religious and civic leaders. Jesus' power is not the power of condemnation, though. It is not the power of exclusion. Jesus' power is not the power of pain and hurt or crushing poverty, imprisonment, or exile. Jesus claims the power of love. The power to restore relationships. The power to make people and families and communities and societies whole through truth and reconciliation. The power to heal instead of injure. The power of love that subverts earthly powers built on domination, authoritarianism, fear, anger, rage, lies, and manipulation. The power of love that names the bond between a parent and a child as one of the strongest and mightiest forces in the universe. So do not be misled during this Advent and Christmas season. Do not think that Jesus, meek and mild, is powerless in this world. John the Baptist warns us that God is coming in power and might to change everything. The amazing, wonderful news of Christmas is that the almighty, powerful God, creator of the universe, has come into this world to live in our midst, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus does not sit down or lay aside God's power at the moment of his incarnation and birth as an infant. No. Jesus embodies God's ultimate power of love the power that changes everything, the power of our God, who is love. Amen. Good morning. I'm Janet Schmidt, the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join me in singing Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. Today we are singing it to the same tune we say last week for Come Now Long Expected Jesus.
During the season of Advent and Christmas, we're going to receive an online worship, some wonderful stories of faith, love, hope, and promise brought to us by members of our congregation using some of their favorite Christmas decorations. I hope that you will enjoy this series and come in close for our first story that's brought to us by Nancy Vereen. Hi, I'm Nancy Vereen. I'm a longtime member of Douglas Avenue Methodist Church. Currently, I'm serving as a lay leader and when we can gather, I'm a member of the Chancel Choir. I'm here to talk to you today about Christmas at the Vereen House. It's always been a very, very special occasion. And one of the things I really love is our Christmas tree, which you might see behind me. And one of the reasons my tree is so special to me is because I don't see it just as a Christmas tree. I see it as a tree filled with love. And that is because so many of the ornaments on our tree have been given to us by family and friends. Each year as we put our tree up, we would look and reminisce about the person that gave us that ornament. And it just warmed our hearts and filled us with love for that person. I'm holding two ornaments today. This is part of my tree of love. These are ornaments that I got, first of all, in 1976 and in 1980. These are our baby's first Christmas ornaments. So each year as I put those on the tree, it brings me back that, to that special point where being a parent is, just fills your heart with love. We had a little more excitement one year and it was back in 1973 when we were first married. And we were living right outside of Cambridge, Massachusetts where my husband was in school and I was working, but we didn't have very much money. So when Christmas came around, we went out and he bought the biggest, scruffiest tree we could get because it was inexpensive. We really didn't have any money. We brought it to our apartment. We set it in a tree stand and looked at it and then thought, we don't have any decorations. So we decided on a plan. We went to King's department store. We bought two boxes of glass red ornaments. We sat down and drew out plans to make gingerbread men to hang on the tree. And we found plans for these little ornaments that were made out of ping pong balls and had little red hair glued to the top of it and a little face drawn on the front. They didn't look like much because neither one of us were very crafty or artistic, but we put them on our tree anyhow and we were very proud. The problem was with the gingerbread men. We hung them all up, we cooked them, we decorated with the little silver balls on them. We put them on the tree and that night, all night long, we kept hearing thump, thump, thump. We had steam heat in our apartment. And what really happened was as those gingerbread men got more moisture, the threads holding them on would pull through the top and they would fall on the floor. But the crowning blow was when I took a bite out of one of the gingerbread men, broke off the back tooth and had to have a crown put on it. So for a young couple who didn't have much money, our love had to overcome everything else because we had to spend almost everything we had getting my tooth fixed. Anyhow, we look back finally on that time. We still put the little ping pong ball on our tree every year. And we have, to this day, we have the gingerbread man. This one's made out of wood because we finally wised up. Anyhow, that love sustained us and we look at those ornaments every year and I look at them and I know where I came from and how much love was in our hearts those days as well as today. So Merry Christmas everyone and have a blessed Advent season. Love very often flows out of us in gifts of generosity, and you all have been so generous in your financial giving to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Truly an outpouring of love. Thank you so much for all of those generous contributions that make our ministries happen every day. I encourage you to keep giving those. You can do that by using our online giving portal. It's available on our webpage. The link is right in the um, 
comment section. You can give using automatic withdrawals through your financial institution, through our financial institution. Just contact us in the church office if you need help with that. And of course, by sending in your checks to give to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I want to encourage you again to fill out your contact form if you have not done that so that we can connect with you in ministry. And if you have not done so already, to bring in your bread or baked good, your juice or beverage so that you'll be ready for Holy Communion that's coming very soon. We also have a mission moment that is brought to us, especially by two special people, about our pizzas with a purpose opportunity here in these first weeks of December. So let's give our attention to Angie and Joe. Hello, I'm Joe Johnson. I'm Angie LaFrenz. And we both work here at the hospital at St. John's. And we wanted to talk to you for a second about the Pizzas for a Purpose program through our church at Douglas. This month in December, we are wanting to donate 100 pizzas to our hardworking healthcare workers as they've been working day in and day out caring for patients. You can donate either through the church website, ding, 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 or you can mail a check-in to the church office as well. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning, my name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup and I am the Associate Pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And now it is time that we um, participate together in Holy Communion. So I invite you to gather your bread and your juice, whatever it is you choose um, to bring to the table today. Go get those items as we prepare our hearts and our minds for Holy Communion. And I remind you that Jesus Christ invites everyone to his table, his Feast of Holy Communion. Wherever you are and whoever you are, church member or not a church member, with your culture and your race, whatever your age, with your gender identity and sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with your household, however many or few that may be, in the fullness of who you are, however you are and wherever you are, you are welcome here. This is Jesus' holy meal and you are invited to participate however you want to participate today. Please join me in our prayer of confession. God of love and kindness, you have promised to renew our lives, to be with us in a new heaven and new earth. But we are afraid of your promised coming. We cling to the rules we understand, the rules of privilege and power. We're afraid of a world of true justice and peace, as we are afraid that you will change the way things have always been. As we wait for you to live among us, we confess our unwillingness to see that you have always been here. I invite you now in a time of silence to confess your sins. Hear now God's assurance. In God's mercy and love, we are given each new day for the healing of the world. In the name of Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you again to bring your bread, your baked good, your juice, your beverage close in as we continue with our prayers. Some of these prayers will have um, responses for you. So just follow along on the screen and do the motions with us and pray aloud and join in this wonderful time of Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our praise and thanks. It is right, good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. You lead us in paths of righteousness and peace. In the words of the prophet Isaiah and the cry of John the baptizer, we have spoken of your great love for your people and have promised to heal all that is broken and forsaken to redeem all who are lost and alone. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven on earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy are you and holy is your child, Jesus Christ whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. Jesus came to the river to be baptized by John the Baptist and taught us of the Holy Spirit living in us and around us and among us and gave himself as Emmanuel, your presence with us always. In the name of Jesus, we offer the prayers of our hearts to you, O God, as we gather at Jesus' table, spread throughout geography and time, Receive our prayers as we share them aloud and in our hearts and in the comments. We pray today, O oh God, for all those who are sick, those struggling with COVID, those that have any illness of any kind, O oh God, we ask your healing presence. We ask you as well to be with all caregivers and essential workers. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We pray, O oh God, for all those that are mourning, mourning the loss of loved ones, mourning the loss of routine or the loss of traditions. We ask that you be with each of us that have heavy hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We pray, O oh God, for all those that seek justice, those that do not feel apart, those that are discriminated with by our systems. We ask, O oh God, that you help each of us know what our part is as we seek justice. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We pray, O oh God, for all those that are doing your work, all the ministries of the church, all the ministries in our community, and all the work of the church throughout the world and all the world leaders. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Amen. I invite you, if you'd like to, to lift up your bread. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can put your bread down and if you'd like to pick up your cup. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so you can put your cup down. And so remembering your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love and service, intimately bound with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And now I invite you to lift up your hands and join with me as we pray for the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ that we may become one with Christ who lived and died and rose to bring healing to a broken world. You can put your hands down. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until we feast together at the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Maker of justice and mercy, spirit of compassion and grace, lover of all creation, we give you thanks and praise now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of God's precious children, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we will eat are a tangible experience of Jesus's transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread Eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you.
And I invite you to pick up your cup, drink and experience that this is Jesus's love for you. We will now offer our prayer of thanks. I will say the, the words first and I ask you to repeat after me. Eternal God. Eternal God. Thank you for this holy mystery. Thank you for this holy mystery. In which you give yourself to us. In which you give yourself to us. Through the bread and the cup. Through the bread and cup. Send us from this meal. Send us from this meal in the strength of your spirit, in the strength of your spirit, to give ourselves for others, to give ourselves for others, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join with Karis and me in singing, All Earth is Waiting. waiting to see the promised one and the open furrows the sowing of the lord all the world bound and struggling seeks true liberty it cries out for justice and searches for the truth thus says the prophet to those of israel a virgin mother will bear Emmanuel, for his name is God with us, a brother shall be. With him hope will blossom once more within our hearts. Mountains and valleys will have to be made plain. Open new highways, new highways for the Lord. He is now coming closer, so come. And open the doorway as wide as wide can be. In lowly stable the promised one appeared. Yet feel his presence throughout the earth today. For he lives in all Christians and is with us now. Again with his coming he brings us liberty. Thank you so much for joining in online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is our privilege to be able to connect with you in online worship in this way. And we hope that this experience has been meaningful and powerful, will make a difference in your life, and that you will continue to join in online worship with us, especially during this season of Advent and Christmas. We love you and we miss being able to see you face to face, but we are so glad that we have these opportunities and just encourage you to continue to connect with us, to use that contact form, to let us uh, love you and be in service with you and in powerful ways that we can grow in our faith together. And now as you go into the rest of your day, go knowing the powerful life-changing love of God, that Jesus Christ comes to us in that amazing transformative power of love every day, and that the Holy Spirit leads and guides and lights your path. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.